One of the guys that I am very excited to talk with about what the sport has been for him and what he has got from the sport, Spencer Rattler. Started his career at Oklahoma, finished his career at South Carolina, and is hoping to be one of the jewels in the NFL draft. Let's go talk to Spencer. I'm pleased to be joined by former South Carolina Gamecocks quarterback and NFL draft hopeful Spencer Rattler. Spencer, how you doing, dog? I'm doing great. Blessed. Can't complain. Hey, man, that's what I'm saying. I go all the way back with Spencer for y'all that don't know, right? We go back to him being in high school, me on the come up, me hustling. But I want to start with this. Like, I feel like we're not talking about you the right way, dog. So let me let me go through the resume just so everybody knows what we're in for. So most outstanding player in the Big 12 championship game, right? Have the game winner against the number eight Iowa State, right? Come back in. 2021 goes the way it goes. 2022, you over there at South Carolina, all you did was beat up on number five, Tennessee. Then give Clemson the what four and a how now, right? 2023, we're talking about breaking school records at South Carolina for completion percentage. And I think you were like third all time in passing yards for a single season. It feels like you are one of the gems in this draft class. If you feel that way, tell me why you feel that way. You know, like you said, um, you know, got a lot of experience, been in two big time conferences, uh, been in three different offenses. So knowledgeable about the game, um, you know, elite competitor, elite passer. Uh, I feel like I'm a fast processor, can get through reads quick, uh, quick learner. Like I said, can go through multiple different offenses. And, you know, I feel like I'm a guy that that it gives us all when he's on the field and, you know, obviously great leader and, you know, just give my all and want to make guys around me better. I mentioned that you and I go all the way back, right? Talking about going back to Pinnacle and then you get into OU. But I need to remind folks that you are more highly rated quarterback coming out of high school than Bo Nix, than Jaden Daniels, than Sam Howell. And then you decided to commit to Oklahoma on the same day that Lincoln Riley got his first head coaching job. How did you come to that conclusion? And did you know you were going to do that? Did, did Lincoln give you any sort of head up? You know, at the time, you know, they were pumping quarterbacks out left and right. And uh, it seemed like a great situation. So... I uh, pulled the trigger. Well, pulling trigger, you get there, right? You're sitting behind a couple of really great quarterbacks, one in particular in Jalen Hurts, and you get your opportunity in 2020. And that's when I really got to see you mature. And you went through some ups and downs through 2020 into 2021, but you also became the first quarterback that Lincoln gave the hook to in favor of Tanner Mordecai on that. I think people forget, oh, you won that game. But coming out of that, what did you learn about yourself? You know that I could just get through anything. I mean, adversity is going to hit no matter what, if you're a quarterback in college or the NFL. So being able to go through that early in my career with success, um, I feel like that has set me up to be ready to where I want to be. I think that's kind of the drawback of being an NFL quarterback as a rookie. You're not really sure what adversity is going to come your way. But as you mentioned, you've kind of been through it. I want to go back to... September 2021, OU's playing West Virginia. You hear OU fans booing you, asking for Caleb Williams, and you're having to play through that. What was your mind like, given two and a half years of just reflecting on that situation? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it was what it was. I mean, um, couldn't control it. You know, we, we I believe that game, like we were 26 to 36, 270, a touchdown or two and maybe one pick and um you know that happened so um couldn't control it but I, I remember that game we drove down that last drive and won the game so I was just happy to get the W 14 plays 80 yards I remember because I was watching it very closely because that was a tight ball game yep and I could not understand why we was boo booing the starting quarterback you know the five-star quarterback and favorite to do was on the bench and then a couple of weeks later you're at OU Texas once again you get the hook once again did you believe that that was the beginning of the end for you at Oklahoma or were you still trying to fight? You know, at the time, uh, no, I was trying to fight, you know, a competitor, you know, wanted to be the starter. You know, I wanted to be a guy that helped my uh, lead my team to win. So, you know, we were on a 15 or 16 game winning streak coming off a big 12 championship. So uh, we were undefeated at the time and it felt right. But, uh, you know, uh, they went with the decision and the rest is history. We say the rest is history. But 2021 is a big year for Oklahoma and for you, right? Because I remember uh, Mike Giovando, your personal QB coach, coming out being like, he's going to transfer. Like that, we know that part, right? But at the time, we didn't know that Lincoln Riley was also going to transfer himself. So I'm curious, when did you find out that Lincoln Riley was going to USC? 
um, honestly, I, I believe I entered my name in the portal like the day after that Oklahoma State game. And uh, I think just remember seeing it on social media, honestly. And when you saw it on social media and you decided to go to the other USC, well, we're getting ahead of ourselves. What made you believe that going to the other USC, South Carolina, was a great decision for you? You know, at first I took my time uh, looking at schools we wanted to go to. Um, you know, there was multiple schools trying to get me to come on visits to commit. Um, obviously, I knew Beamer for, for two years prior because he was at OU as the tight end coach. Um, so I had a good relationship with him and, you know, knew he was a player's coach, had a great drive, um, was just a great dude. And uh, actually, Austin Stogner had visited uh, a couple weeks before me and he loved it. He fell in love with it and I, and I trusted him. And, uh, you know, I think I had a virtual visit with them. It sounded amazing. And uh, it was a gut feeling. We pulled the trigger, went down there the week after, I think in like December, visited and knew I made the right decision. Beamer is one thing. At the time, Marcus Satterfield is another. And I remember a quote that Satterfield gave to Chris Lowe at the time talking about recruiting you, South Carolina. He says, people think I suck. People think you suck. Why don't we go kick their ass together? That's his telling. Is that how you heard it? Uh, I didn't hear it like that. You know, he, <laughs> hey, okay. hey, he, he he's a great guy, funny guy. Um, still talk to him to this day. But, you know, his offense was was very complex and pro style. So that's what caught my eye as well. You know, I learned a ton from him and, um, you know, I know we had our ups and downs early throughout the year, but we finished out really hot and I learned a ton from him. So you transferred to South Carolina and you got to get to know a new group of players, a new group of dudes, somewhat of a clean slate, but they know about what you have been doing at Oklahoma and even know about the acclaim you had coming out of high school. What did you learn during your time at Oklahoma that helped you better translate to being the starting quarterback at South Carolina? You know, I think just having uh, experience, you know, playing college ball, period, uh, being a starter mm -hmm. in college is is a you know big opportunity. And if you have that experience under your belt, you'll be ready uh, to transition. So, you know, I use that, but then totally flip the script. I just wanted to attack every single day uh, going to South Carolina. Um, obviously knew I had to acclimate into a new environment, new teammates, new program, fan base, all that. Uh, so I came in and just had my head down, didn't say too much. I uh, wanted to gain uh, my teammates' trust and respect through my work ethic. And uh, it was a very smooth transition. You know, they made it easy for me and, you know, very happy I, I went to SC. I'm going to preface this by saying you beat up on Florida in the Cotton Bowl in 2020. But I need to know, tell the truth, shame the devil, is SEC competition that much more difficult than Big 12 competition? You know, the Big 12 has a lot of talent, you know, a lot of... A lot of good defenses, a lot of good players as well. But um, when they say the SEC means more, they're not lying. You know, it, it's for real. And um, that was a big decision on why I wanted to go to the SEC, you know, to play the best, um, to be on that stage every single week. I mean, there's nothing like it. And um, the, the talent we saw week in and week out was was, was great. The talent you saw week in and week out was one thing. It's, it's to know Georgia's in your division at the time, at a time when we still got East and West divisions, but also Tennessee is on the come up. And y'all going to have the state championship with Clemson every single year. What are Oklahoma fans in for? Because remember, they wanted this move. I, I have been very loud about this. I'm not exactly excited about this. I like winning 12 games a year. I like winning the Big 12 championship. What are Oklahoma fans in for in this SEC? You know, uh, just a lot of physicality. You know, a lot of talent. No, no matter what the team is, um, there's going to be talent on every single team, no matter what the record is. So, I mean, especially with, with OU and Texas coming into the SEC, it's going to be super fun to watch. You know, can't wait to watch from afar. Uh, all those schedules look pretty brutal, you know, for every team. So it'll be fun for everybody. A lot of great competition. Um, just expect big time environments and uh, shoot. It's a great time in any SEC stadium. Hey, man, who you telling? I keep looking at Oklahoma 2024 and 2025 schedule. I'm like, where's Vanderbilt? Yeah, we can't we can't play we we can't play Vanderbilt. <laughs> yeah, really? And he, real? hey, even they have even they have some players now. Right. Well, I mean, and to that point, right? So my follow to that was, what was the game or the play, perhaps a story, that you could tell me about when you learned that the SEC just means more? Shoot, I would probably say when we played Georgia early in the season in in 2021. Um, few of those guys are on the Eagles now. Uh, so I feel like I played a good amount of the Eagles defenders. Um, just the size, speed, physicality, uh, their schemes, their coaching. Uh, was, it was good. It was really good. You know, they had a lot of talent and, um, you know, they beat us down pretty bad in 21 at our place. So we made it a little tighter this past year, you know, but it's a really good team. 
Beamer had a really great quote following that game about, you know, what, what, what was he facing with Georgia? He's got like got five stars at every position. What do you want me to tell you, dog? Like, are you paying attention? Jiminy Christmas. And it's like that. I understand. But I also, I hear you saying you played against some Eagles defenders. I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you, you want to play with Dallas Cowboys? Shoot. America's team. Uh, my dad grew up a Cowboys fan. Um, Hey, I wouldn't complain. That would be a blessing. It's curious to me that you're in this spot, right? Because most uh, folks are talking about you as a day two quarterback, right? Somebody that could really help somebody a little bit later down the draft. But the first round talent has always been there. It's been there since you were 16 years old. Throw it, Spencer, you throw in 40-yard bonds behind your back, dog. And I, and I remember these things. And I wonder throughout this entire process not just the nfl process but from big 12 to the sec have you had to remind yourself or get a reminder that no i'm i'm really good at this i can do this at a very high level you know rj i mean ever since i transferred i still kept that confidence you know mm -hmm. i still kept that confidence as, and was excited to show it you know on a different venue uh different conference and you know, you got to just keep pushing. Not everything's going to be given. Not everything's going to be easy. But I always kept that confidence. And, uh, you know, I believe I'm, you know, one of the top guys in this quarterback class. So, um, you know, everybody's opinion, you respect it, but you got to know your worth and just keep working. Control what you can. It dawned on me that it takes a very specific kind of quarterback to play for Lincoln Riley. And there's a definite personality trait y'all share, which is confidence. He doesn't want to have to give y'all confidence. He wants y'all to walk in knowing that y'all are the dudes. I wonder if you can unpack that just a little bit more for us that don't play the position and haven't played that position for him. What does it take to play for a guy like Lincoln Riley? I mean, not just for him, but for any coach. Um, mm -hmm. I think any coach wants a quarterback with confidence. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you got to be able to you know, lead when times are hard. You got to get up when you're getting hit every other play and just keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, you got to motivate others, you know, young guys, you know, that aren't ready to go. You just got to motivate them and bring them. And then you got to be an elite competitor on the field. And, you know, I feel like I have all those, uh, you know, attributes and, uh, you know, want to keep building on them. But yeah, I feel like any quarterback, you, you have to be confident to go out there and succeed and, and move the ball and get it in the end zone. Baker, Jalen, Kyler, Tanner, yourself. But I wonder how often have you been, asked to compare yourself to what Caleb Williams has done at SC? Uh, you know, not too much. You know, both okay. our paths are different. You know, he's a great player, went on and did his thing. Um, and, you know, I took my path and, you know, I'm here now. So, um, you know, all of, all of us QBs, you know, got different traits, different attributes, and we're all special in our own way. And, uh, you know, I'm just blessed to be where I'm at right now. Uh, I'm happy with the situation and still working three weeks till the draft. Excited to see where I land. One of the things that I noticed is also you, in the last couple of years, more, more, I guess going into 2021, perhaps when Benny Wiley was still strength coach at Oklahoma, you seem to have put on quite a bit more weight, right? I remember you being a little bit more life, a little bit more mobile, if you will. Has that helped your game? You being just a little bit heavier? I think it's kept me healthy, you know, having, mm -hmm. having some size on you, especially in the SEC, you know, you don't want to be um, thin getting hit around, you know, every week in the SEC, you know, I think a little extra size kept me healthy, you know, knock on wood, you got to thank God every day for that, but, you know, never really been uh, banged up seriously and, um, you know, thanking God every day because of it, but I think size does help. I, I would say so, right? And it's also been very cool to see your maturation because I'm, you know, Spencer, I think of you as one of my guys, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to watch you wherever you go, playing wherever you're playing. If you're on television, I get to see it. I get to see you. But being able to watch you work through these three different offenses, and that's kind of where I want to take this in the NFL, is you've had experience with Lincoln. You've had experience with Marcus. You had experience with Dow. Is there anything that you learned from playing those three different offenses that you think would help you translate to a new offense in the NFL? I think just going through those, you know, those three offenses, like you said, you know, learning an air raid, learning a, a pro style and a different type of pro style. I mean, just getting reps at that, reps at that experience, um, it helps. So going into the senior bowl, um, you know, I was 
I felt prepared going in. You know, the verbiage uh, was clear to me, knew, knew what they were talking about, understood the schemes. Uh, protections were a little different, but easy to pick up on. Um, but yeah, it just comes with reps and, and, and being confident in the huddle, getting in and out the huddle, moving the ball, getting the calls in. And uh, yeah, I think going to South Carolina helped me a lot. And, and even even the air raid system at Oklahoma, you know, a lot of teams use a little bit of air raid as well. So knowing all that helps. I'm noticing that Coach Loggins had a lot of experience in the NFL when he brought that to his offense at South Carolina. But I'm also looking around and I'm going, yo, man, uh, a lot of these concepts that I see Andy Reid using and, and even some of these other offenses around the, uh, the NFL are very much steeped in what we we call air raid. I don't know how much that translates anymore. But you having all that experience in these multiple offenses and understanding what your traits are, I, I need you to tell me, what is the thing that you think you are the best at on a football field? Mm -hmm. uh, I think dropping back and throwing the ball, you know, getting through progressions. Okay. It, could be, it could be down the field, uh, play action, um, quick game, RPO. You know, I feel comfortable on the field. You don't have to cut off one side. I can full, full field progression, you know, pre-snap, post-snap alerts. Um, I feel good. Um, in whatever scheme, you know, some, some more comfortable than others, but I think getting reps at multiple different offenses, schemes, stuff like that, you kind of, you know, know what you're good at and, and know what you like, but definitely love throwing that ball down the field and hitting a little play action, moving the pocket a little bit. Can't complain. One of the questions that I get asked when your name comes up is what do you think about him? And I tell folks often, I love Spencer. Spencer was one of the guys that called me back. Spencer's one of the guys that made time for me. Spencer's one of those guys that I got to meet his family at the opening final, right? I got to see you go through it with a group of dudes that I'm still very close to, right? But I, I often wonder, where does that come from? And they'll tell me they know this from QB1 Beyond the Lights. They know this from OU Texas in 2021, in 2020. What would you want people to say about you or think about you as you go into the NFL draft? You know, I think people uh, ha have seen, um, you know, throughout the years, you know, people change from when they're 17 years old, 18. Um, natural growth happens, you know, going through success, adversity, all that. Going through a transfer, um, you're going to naturally, you know, grow in areas you need to. Um, you know, but I, you know, I'm just me. I'm authentic. Um, and, you know, whatever people's opinion is, it is. But um, like you said, you know, you've known me since I was a youngin. So, um, you know, appreciate all the love you've had for me for this time. And, um, you know, just excited, you know? I'm going to say it like this. Uh, Spencer helped put me on when I was hustling, when I went down to Frisco at the opening final to seek him out. And then I get to know his parents, Mike and Sue, get to even meet your little sister at the time, who uh, I believe was a great volleyball player, right? I got that right? Yep, okay. she's athletic. Right. She's talented. That's what I'm saying, right? So knowing all those things about you, uh, I'm so excited for this day for you to come and to see what you can do in the National Football League. Spencer Rattler, thank you so much for taking time to join us here on the number one college football show. Yes, sir. Thank you. Great seeing you. Got the full Spencer Rattler experience right there. And I think there are two things that I wanted to pick out from that interview. One is I asked him what he does best. He said, hey, dog, give me the ball. Watch me drop back. Watch what I do with it. And also you can see some of the maturity in there and knowing the difference between college football and the NFL going, you don't have to tell me to read one side of the field. I can do all of this. I hope Spencer has a very long career in the NFL, despite how it may or may not start. It's one of my guys. If you like what you've seen, consider subscribing to the number one college football show on YouTube, the Fox Sports app, or wherever you get your podcast.